two people in the chat. Oh, thanks, Adam, for the host. Um, going to be cracking a whole booster box of these collector boosters for M21. I opened a, a bunch of the Ikoria ones, and those were very good value. And I cracked a couple of these earlier today, and equally insane value. There's just a lot of pretty crazy stuff you can get on these. The Theros and the um, Throne ones were kind of medium. Uh, I feel like they finally have found a pretty sweet spot with these past couple. So, pretty excited. Um, looking for maybe another Ugin would be pretty cool. Uh, averaged about five Planeswalkers a box. So, uh, pretty good hit rate. Got a couple Grim Tutors. I have a play set of Foil Cultivates. So, these are pretty insane. Throw that over there like it's garbage, because it is. I will put these over. I'll put these over with Teferi. Hang on over here. Alright, let's crack a pack. There's only like four slots in this pack that's, that are really like worthless, the, the uh, commons. Because I think some of the uncommons even will probably hold water over the long term. So we got this Construct token that's also a zombie. Uh, the Construct art is new. It looks like Kaladesh. Uh, the zombie token is old. This is an Innistrad zombie. Uh, say that. Innistrad zombie. And this pretty cool construct. Uh, oh, we need a little bit more. Let me try adjusting my light angle here. Uh, that's a bit better. Okay. So there's the construct. There's the zombie. Pretty good. Uh, there's a weird token in this set that's really cool. Uh, so we have Makeshift Battalion, whatever, Track Down, Thrill Possibility, Cage Zombie, our Uncommons, Battle Rattle Shaman, and Witch's Cauldron. Uh, Battle Rattle Shaman's pretty cool. Uh, and then every pack has one of these uh, showcase lands. In this case, it is a Teferi Island. And um, they're all gorgeous. And also, all like a couple bucks, so you're guaranteed to get at least one of these in every pack. That's like your absolute floor. If there are no other cards in this pack, it would still be worth four bucks. Uh, we have Niambi, esteemed speaker. She is Teferi's daughter who's biologically older than him, because he's a magic time man. And then we have uh, Subira. This is the almost Alesha. It's like some percentage of an Alesha who smiles at death. It's pretty cool. That's foil. Uh, then we have a foil full art feline sovereign. My favorite. Uh, my favorite uh, cat flavor ability where he pushes a cup off your desk. He destroys artifacts. Uh, that's pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Whenever one or more cats you control deals combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Uh, I will put the foil for full art over here. Uh, we have Liliana Steward. Pretty cool. These are the uh, spotlight. Uh, they're spotlight commons and uncommons. And there's like usually three or four of these a pack, either foil or not. Uh, and they all have the alternate frames for whoever the Planeswalker is. In this case, it's the purple is the Liliana. Uh, then we have Basri's Acolyte. And this is uh, this is Basri Ket. And I really like this uh, frame. The like cool sand frame is really sweet. Put that here. And oh, yep, speak of the devil. It's Teferi, Master of Time. Here he is. This is the uh, borderless uh, alternate art. And this is not foil, it's just a regular printing. Um, so like $40, so that's pretty good on a first pack. And then we got a pair more of uh, Liliana commons and uncommons. 
got devotee and steward and foil this time. There's this is usually how these packs end. They like one in every three or four has a, a rare mythic in that last slot, but usually it's a foil of one of the commons or uncommons. I'm just gonna put that right here and let's go to pack two. Pretty good starting pack. Start off with uh, yeah, yeah, my fifth Teferi. Like, up to my eyeballs and Teferis. This one's not foil, though, so I don't like it. I'll throw it in the trash. Um, we got some commons. Who cares? Uh, Reign of Revelation from Modern Horizons reprinted into Standard in this set. Solid effect. Draw three cards, discard a card. Like that. Uh, Talarian Kraken. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. When you do, you may tap or untap target creature. Not bad. Fine finisher and limited. Uh, we have a uh, Chandra Mountain. And this is... Uh, I'm not sure if this is supposed to, supposed to be like Regatha or if it's supposed to be someplace in Kaladesh because it is kind of swirly, but... Uh, I love the Chandra fr frame with like the flames on the bottom. It's just really cool. And in foil, it looks super sweet. Um, and then we have Animal Sanctuary, uh, which loves birds, cats, dogs, goats, oxes, or snakes. Uh, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on any of those things by tapping it uh, and paying two. That's four. We have Baron, Talarian Archmage, the stupid jerk. That's just a regular foil. Pretty nice. Uh, we have a Temple of Triumph. We've all seen those before, so I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, Garrick's Gorehorn. I think this card looks really weird because it doesn't have the flavor text. So it just has this like big, grassy emptiness in the middle of it. Uh, but I do like the Garrick. Uh, uh, borders as well. Here is Teferi's Tutelage. <laughs> I'll just go get a penny. Yeah, it's, it's only a common. It's not worth anything. Alright, wow, that's a big old guy. And then we have Massacre Worm, uh, alternate full art. This is Borderless Alternate Art Massacre Worm. Uh, this is basically how my first box started, too. I opened Teferi in the first pack, and then I opened a Massacre Worm. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, don't hate that. Then we got a foil Bosri's Acolyte, um, which is pretty neato. It's a cat. Common cat. Uh, and then we have a foil. Uh, this is a foil spotlight card. This is Chandra's Incinerator. Uh, five red for a 6-6. Six, six. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponent this turn. It has Trample. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, uh, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to a dark creature or Planeswalker that player controls. Uh, this card is actually worth about $14 right now in foil. I imagine it'll go down a little bit, but um, I can't imagine a ton of these are getting cracked, so... Especially with, like, no one drafting or anything. So I think it'll probably hold a fair bit of water. I think a lot of these prices are going to stick around pretty similar to where they are. Go on to pack three. We have a weird-looking griffin that I can't tell if it's, like, misprinted or it's just kind of purpley. But it's difficult to see how uh, odd the, the chroma is on it. But it is kind of weird. Swamp. Don't need to look at Swamp. Llanowar Visionary. That's a Elven Visionary and a Llanowar Elf uh, stapled to each other. Uh, Vryn Wingmare. Invigorating Surge. Hate Vryn, Vryn Wingmare. It's like a tiny flying uh, Thalia. Then we got Basri's uh, Cool Planes. I really like and that's almond cat for sure. Um, I got a ruined halo full art. That's not an alternate art, that's just the art for ruined halo. And then a spore web weaver. 
how much of uh, makes saplings when it takes damage and it has hexproof from blue. Which is pretty specific as far as abilities go. So have I not hit any regular foils yet? I haven't. All right. New pile. We have a foil, uh, borderless, or foil extended art, rather, Caravec. That's spiteful. This character first appeared in Battle Bond. Um, and he makes other creatures get minus one, minus one. All the time. Maybe that's a good effect. Maybe it's not. We have Loliana Steward. Uh, Chandra's Magmut. Which is the Chandra common. And then we have a Containment Priest. Uh, borderless. These are actually very cheap right now. Uh, uh, tough call, Adam. I don't, I don't know. They're both very good. Like this set has a lot of reprinted staples and the and like a bunch of EDH cards and the foil modifier on everything is just like so high. Um, but Ikoria has like the the Toho uh like Godzilla cards and those are never getting reprinted and are also in foil work worth like a lot. So it's really, really tough. I think they're both, they're both good investments. I think honestly. Uh, then we have Basri Solidarity and Garrick Scorehorn. Uh, these are just commons and uncommons. Don't need to dwell on that. Okay, you go there. All right, <clears throat> that is three packs, and we are Teferi, Massacre Worm, Containment Pri Priest on that slot, so not feeling terrible. Uh, and like I said, we've put a bunch of cards on the table here that are like, you know, between 4 and $15 on top of that. So, pretty feeling pretty good. We got some garbage. Uh, we have the card that makes the cool weird, and I still hope we see that weird at some point. Is he on the back of this demon? Nah, that's Goblin Wizard. Although the Goblin Wizard is very funny. There's a Sorcery, I think, that makes those Goblin Wizards. But Experimental Overload, cre uh, two blue-red, Cree, and XX blue and red weird creature token, where it access the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Then you may return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and then you exile it. Uh, that is the uncommon that this is. Uh, and... I'm going to print up these more uncommon. That's what I'm going to use. Oop. Experimental. Overload, go over there. Archfiend's Vessel, kind of an interesting card. Uh, we have a Garrick Forest, so that's cool. And these are, that's the Garrick Border, all in foil, of course. Uh, then we have Conspicuous Snoop, who's a very silly goblin. See his nose up the little window there. Uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer Foil, that's just regular foil. And then we have a Mythic uh, Elder Gargaroth. That's in foil as well. Uh, Bosri's Acolyte. Common. Garrick's Uprising. Uncommon. It's the Garrick Uncommon. Each Planeswalker, except for Ugin, who has no cards associated with him, each other Planeswalker has a common, an uncommon, and a rare associated with them, and then the land. Uh, we have Garrick's Harbinger, speaking of. That's Garrick's rare. Uh, Hexproof from black. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player Planeswalker, look at the, that many cards from the top of your library. You may reveal a creature card or Garrick Planeswalker card from them, put into your hand. Rest on the bottom of your library in random order. And he's a 4-3 for three. Pretty okay. Uh, I'm going to put him right here. Then I'm going to, this is Garrick's Great Horn, or Gorhorn. And then here we are, uh, boom, Foil Scavenging Ooze, uh, Borderless Alt Art. That's not bad. These are worth quite a bit. I don't remember exactly how much, I just remember it was a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, every one of these packs has pretty much been the sauce. Like, I guess the Containment Priest is kind of, like, 
uh, underwhelming as a single card, but the rest of them, none of them have had nothing. And you're certainly not going through a whole box of these without hitting some good stuff. Um, cat token, that's also a bird token. Uh, there's the cat, he's really cute. The bird is just a uh, Return of Ravnica bird. Still haven't hit that weird. Some commons. Uh, Query on Dryad, that's pretty cool, is in this set. And Faith Fetters, that's quite a good spell. Uh, we have Foil Swamp, that's Liliana's land. I really like these ones. I think my favorite are probably the Chandra ones, but these are pretty good. We got a Full Art Temple of Malady. Uh, foil, Full Art, or Extended Art Double Vision. Really hard. Uh, we have a Foil uh, Extended Art Pack Leader. Look at that good boy. This card is insane also. Like, uh, in Limited, this card is very difficult to beat, I find, even if you have, like, two dogs in your deck. Like, he's a dog lord that is also immune to combat damage uh, when he attacks, which is pretty pretty tough to beat, I find, if you have any way to pump him, make him bigger. Even just attacking with a 2-2 that they can't profitably block is pretty rough. We got Chandra's uh, Rage Magma, Liliana Steward, and then we have Chandra Heart of Fire Spotlight version. There's just so many cool versions of all the cards and walkers in this set, which is why I think it's good for a from a collector booster perspective. But yeah, this is Chandra Heart of Fire. Um, she's not the best Chandra, but she's not the worst Chandra. She's pretty okay. Uh, I haven't opened any mythic spotlight cards yet. I'll just I'll put her with the, the big big boys. Then we have Chandra's Pyrling and Chandra's Magma. This was a extremely Chandra centric pack. So we are uh, five packs, two planeswalkers, uh, four packs had alternate art uh, borderless cards, and the one that didn't have that had a uh, Chandra uh, spotlight. So. Not complaining. Got this uh, weird little cat token that's like a panther. Very dark. And then this is, uh, I believe, the Thrag Tusk Beast. Actually, is that art? Uh, and then we got four cards that are common. We have two cards that are not. Uh, I really like Watcher of the Spheres. He's a bird wizard. He's a little owl. Owl wizard. He's pretty cool. Good card. Uh, we have uh, Bowsery Plains. I'll probably gloss over those now that we've just kind of we've opened all of them. Uh, we have Pursued Whale. Eight eight for seven. With a lot of other text. That's uh, full art. Enters the battlefield, each opponent gets a 1 1 red pirate token that can't block. And creatures you control attack each combat if able. And spells that target pursued will cost 3 more to cast. Well, that's a lot of stuff. Ooh, we have a foil, this is a regular, but foil discontinuity. I bet that's worth a couple bucks. Uh, we have Karavek, the Spiteful, and Foil, but this is not full art, so that's probably not worth that much. He's only a rare. Uh, Garrick, Scorehorn, Basri, Solidarity. We have uh, Teferi's Ageless Insight. And that's just a non-foil. The foil of this is worth uh, about $15. We have a foil Basri Zaklite, and woo, yeah, there's some stuff. How about a... Uh, what a foil altar grim tutor. How's that strike you? Yeah. That seems pretty pretty caliente. I know this card's expensive, like really expensive. The regular version's like $45, so. Uh, 
Okay, so we're halfway into the box. And be pretty comfortable saying that if we're just looking at these spotlight cards, we're sitting on like almost a couple hundred dollars. Uh, and these cards over here also worth money. So pretty good. Not bad. And having like opened several other boxes, I can confirm that this is not an uncommon run. This is pretty, uh, yeah, it's a, it's actually, pr I mean, like, they're, the prices are pretty valued for the, uh, the spotlight versions of them are pretty expensive. Uh, it's like, but it is, I think, going to be pretty, pretty good. So, uncommons. Silver Smoke Ghoul, the most me card ever. He is a zombie that is also a vampire. Uh, very excited about that. Traitorous Greed. We have a Teferi Island. Uh, we have Glorious Anthem Extended Art. That's pretty cool. I like the art for this Glorious Anthem, too. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, we have a Foil Sanctum of All. That's the five-color uh, shrine. Uh, we have a Extended Art Hooded Blight Fang Foil. He is a... 1-4 for 3 with Death Touch. Uh, your Death Touch creatures drain. And they destroy Planeswalkers and so on. He's pretty good. Uh, we have Bazaar's Acolyte, Teferi's Protégé. We have... Oh, yeah. We have Solemn Simulacrum. Alternate Art. Not bad at all. Uh, then we have Liliana Seward, Liliana's Devotee. And those are just commons and uncommons. So we've hit Solemn Simulacrum. We have seen Foil Grim Tutor. I think Foil Grim Tutor is the single most expensive card we've opened so far in this box. We haven't hit like a Foil Teferi or something insane. Uh, still haven't seen that weird token. I'll have to just get one out of the pile over here. I just want to show it to you. Because it's pretty cool. I really like it. Where are you, weird? Oh, I like that angel, too. Then I promise to get back to opening really expensive ass cards. Here we go. This card is really cool looking. And especially in foil. I think that's just very, very cool. Super is it -y. Love it. Yeah, Foil Grim Tutor, not bad. I opened a foil of the regular Grim Tutor, uh, but had not opened a foil of the uh, the extended art yet. I'm curious about how much that is. Let's see what's in that. Alternate art Grim Tutor, currently floating at $130, so that's pretty okay. It'll probably come down a little bit, but not that much. It only... Realistically, you're not going to hit very many uh, foils of that card in regular packs. I think it's technically possible, but some of these, the uh, like extended arts of the regular non-alternate art cards, those only occur in these packs, so um, they're going to be relatively expensive. We have Baron. This is extended art Baron. Um, Seems okay, like he's got a bounce effect, but it's not super exploitable. I feel like you can only do it once, so. A turn at least. And there's a Niambi foil, but regular. Here's a regular Chandra's Incinerator foil. Probably not going to be worth anything because the, there's like a spotlight version of it. Uh, we have Chandra's Magma. Uh... We have a Cultivate, and the regular versions of cult of this Cultivate altar are ridiculously cheap right now. They're like three, four dollars, I think. I don't see them staying there, but uh, we have a Foil Magma. Then we have uh, Liliana Standard Bearer. Uh, this is the Spotlight Showcase version of that, and then we have uh, Foil Garrick's Harbinger. 
found that all of these in foil in the spotlight version are kind of kind of expensive. They're not cheap. All right, let's see what we got this time. This angel token I like. Uh, don't remember where this first came from. Sapling token is from Dominaria though. Siege Striker and Lore Scale Quaddles in the set, which is sweet. That is a very, very cool card, which needs to be answered or it will kill you because it gets really big. Uh, we have Chandra Mountain. We have Extended Art Double Vision. Uh, we have Foil Scoos. That's pretty cool. The Foil Alternate Arts are a lot. These are still a fair amount. Wowzers, okay. We have my third foil Taffery, the Wimmy Wham Wham Wazzle, that's like a hundred dollars. Uh, we have Devotee Steward, uh, and this is a double Planeswalker pack because we also have a Showcase Garrick Unleashed. Uh, here's Django Unchained for you, too. He's only like five dollars, but still a very cool card. I really like the art. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty good pack. Uh, Basri's Acolyte, Foil Grimhorn. Uh, so we're doing all right. We got three packs left. Can we hit Ugin? That's really what we're looking for. It's like, how greedy can we be? It's like, well, I want a Foil Showcase Ugin. That's how greedy I am. Uh, got Leafkin Avenger. Uh, pretty... Pretty okay card. Fungal Rebirth. Forest. A full art hooded blight fang. Not bad. Don't hate it. Oh, dang it. I said showcase foil Ugin, not just regular foil Ugin. I mean, it's still like infinity dollars, but it's not the one I want. I have to be all Veruca Salt about it, but you know. There's a foil extended art rune halo. Pretty cool. Great Horn, Acolyte. I'm never going to not stop calling this Garrick's Great Horn. It's Garrick's Gore Horn is what it's actually called. Oh, we have Basri's Lieutenant. Uh, we have Chandra's Pyroling. Wow, this pack was, is apparently a real drama queen because it's really backloading all the value, even though the front was pretty good too. Here's a uh, foil showcase Chandra Heart of Fire. So there were two foil Planeswalkers in this pack. Just not the one that I wanted. What the hell? Come on, man. I guess I can, like, sell this Ugin and the Chandra and then just buy the Ugin that I want. Uh, all right, we got Cat and Drag Tusk Beast. Uh, we got some commons. We got some uncommons. It's the first Sanctum I've seen. They're uncommon, the uh, the shrines in this set. Uh, we have Stormwing Entity Full Art. This card's really cool. Uh, it's a flying 3 3 for 5. Costs 2 blue less to cast if you cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. So you opt and it's uh, 2 mana. Uh, as Prowess, and when it enters the battlefield, you cry 2. Pretty good. Pretty good. We have nine lives. I love this card. It's a house cat with like, what well, looks like Jazzle, Goldmane, and uh, Kemba, Ka region, and uh, whatever the one, the uh, orphan guard from uh, Ikoria is also in the background there. A lot of really ridiculous cats. We have uh, Spark Hunter Masticor. This is a uh, creature type that I think we last saw in Battle Bond. Uh, there was an uncommon Massacre that was pretty good in that set. Uh, we have Chandra's Pyroling, Liliana Steward. We have another Containment Priest. I have so many Containment Priests, guys. Uh, and then we have Chandra's Magma and Basri's Solidarity. Well, I don't know what could be in this last pack that could upstage the Ugin Chandra foil pack. But I'd love to be proven wrong. 
Uh, we got Bird Demon. Don't care about that. Four commons, two uncommons. We have Mountain. Ooh, we have a Extended Art Chromatic Orrery. Pretty cool. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. Add five colorless. Five mana tap. Draw a card for each color among permanents you control. Seems like a really sweet EDH card to me. We have Speaker of the Heavens. Whatever. Uh, Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. This is going to be expensive. Uh, the regular version foil of this is, is a not zero dollars, so I have to imagine that's going to be expensive. A couple bucks. Um, Chandra's Magma. Everest Protégé. Okay, okay. Here's a grim, another Grim Tutor. So, fair enough. That's, that's pretty good. And, oh, yeah. Okay. And then there's a Foil Cultivate uh, Altar in here as well. Okay. All right. You got me, Box. Still had a lot of money left to give me. All right. So, yeah. That's a pretty, pretty good 12 packs of cards, even if you were... Uh, paying retail on this box, I would be way ahead on value. Uh, and that's sort of been my experience with these and with the, um, and with the Ikoria ones. I opened, I think, five boxes of the Ikoria over the course of Ikoria and did not come out under 350 on any of them. And four of them were like 400 plus dollar boxes um, to and these were similarly it's difficult to say exactly where the average is going to fall because the set hasn't released yet but it seems pretty high uh, some of these cards just can't, don't really have the capability of being cheap like especially the like Ugins and there's just not going to be that many of these open so uh, to recap, I just want to separate these out into my piles I have over here. Uh, and then I want to lay out our really, really big tickets. I just have two piles of these, I guess. That's silly. These, uh, these slots on these are a lot less lazily curated too. There's like each slot practically in the pack has a, a different thing it can be. And I think that makes it a lot more exciting and interesting. It makes the packs more interesting because you don't, you know, like with some of the packs, you knew that all the money was going to be centered in the like last three slots. And that's just not the case with these or with the Ikoria ones, but especially not with these are like even more granular. So we were, Cultivate, Foil, Grim Tutor, Containment Priest, Chandra, Alt Art, Foil, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, Foil, Garrick Unleashed, Teferi, Foil, Regular Cultivate, Solemn Simulacrum, Grim Tutor, Foil, Skews, Foil, Chandra, Heart of Fire, Another Containment Priest, Masker Worm, Teferi, Master of Time, Alt Art. I would say you're... Like, this Grim Tutor is like $130. This guy's like $40. The regular Grim Tutor is like $50. This Teferi is $100. I have to assume this Ugin is something very similar. Uh, how much are you, Eugene the Spirit Dragon? Regular Eugene foil, show me. Because they're like all so different that different people are just going to prefer different ones. $40. It's like as cheap as it gets. Forty dollar foil Ugin. Um, so I mean, it's like if you're looking for value, the set's got it. There is a lot of pretty wacky shit to be had in these collector boosters. Uh, I like played Magic for a long time, uh, and I've had a lot of fun opening the collector boosters from the past couple. Uh, past couple sets, uh, they're just really exciting like that. I really like the Godzilla cards, they're just really cool, so it was really cool fishing for those. 
and uh, I really like Planeswalkers and alternate art Planeswalkers, so like the set is really amazing for that. And I'm sort of hoping they do some neat land stuff in Zendikar Rising, but I guess we'll see. Uh, anyway, um, hope this was entertaining for you to watch me open these completely bananas cards. Uh, we do have these up for sale on the website um, in individual packs because we don't have a ton of them. Um, and also they're quite expensive, so I figured no one would want to buy a box. Uh, we do have a couple boxes, though, so if anyone is interested, uh, feel free to uh, inquire about that uh, via email or just message me on the Discord. Uh, that's going to do it for me, so thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you the next time something cool comes out for me to open. Probably going to be Double Masters, I expect, in August. I'll probably crack a box. Uh, yeah, fetches and Zen Like, I don't think they're going to be in the the set proper, but I think it would be cool if there were, like, alt art lands like Zendikar Expeditions and the Collector Boosters. That would still be sweet. Uh, you know, they've been pretty pretty adamant about not putting them into standard but they could still put them in the packs so that would be pretty dope um, yeah anyway i'll probably see you again in august for double masters uh gonna open at least one box of those catch you later